Okay, what's up YouTube? Today I have a video on Austrian vehicles of World War II, including Austrian vehicles that were designed in the post-World War I era. Now keep in mind, after World War I, Austria gained its independence from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but for some strange reason, the Austrians, out of all the Germanic groups in Europe, that includes the Czechs and the Hungarians, the Austrians didn't really design tanks like their German and Hungarian and Czech counterparts. But they did design a lot of improvised armored vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, and tracked wheel come vehicles that could be considered tanks, but aren't actually tanks. So here are the vehicles of Austria that were designed before World War II and vehicles that were used in the Second World War. Now, the first vehicle designed by the Austrians was the Heigl Auto Panzer M25, and this was a training armored car from 1929. This vehicle was armed with two 7.92mm Swirlers machine guns fitted into two turrets, two rotating turrets that had a 360 degree revolving angle. Its armor thickness is unknown, and this is where this vehicle gets strange. Now, some of these vehicles were legit armored cars while some of these were just mock-up armored cars, meaning they weren't real armored cars. So it's kind of hard to tell which ones were real armored cars and which ones were just mock-ups. That is why the armor thickness on this vehicle is pretty unknown, but if I had to estimate, it was probably between 5 and 10 millimeters. The crew of this vehicle was between 4 and 6, and its speed is also unknown. I would estimate that the speed was probably around 25 miles per hour. Keep in mind these vehicles were not very fast, they were just fast enough. And these vehicles were used as training vehicles for the Austrian army between 1929 and the Civil War in 1934. The next Austrian vehicle was the Heigl Auto Panzer or Panzer Auto M26. And this was another training armored car from 1929. Um, it is sometimes known as the Gepanzer PKW-1929. And this vehicle was also armed with two Swirlos machine guns or two German-made Maxim machine guns. Its armor thickness is also unknown, but I would estimate it to be between 5 and 10 millimeters also since it came out in the same year as the first Heigl Panzer Auto M25. The speed on this vehicle is unknown, strangely enough, and the crew of this vehicle was between 3 and 4. Now, I would say that this is the better version of the Heigl Panzer Autos as it has a single turret that can go 360 degrees and has both machine guns in one turret. Now, these vehicles were both used as training vehicles in the Austrian army, but were considered to be the first Austrian-built armored fighting vehicles of the 1920s and of the post World War I era, which brings us to the next vehicle on the list. That is the ADKZ Baby Scout series. Now these were a series of scout armored cars that were designed in 1937. Now in 1934, Austria had actually gone through a civil war between the socialist and the fascist, and the fascists eventually took over. Now, fascist Austria, or nationalist Austria, decided to copy off of their German neighbors, and Germany was also building a series of scout armored cars for the Reichswehr slash Wehrmacht, and the Austrians also wanted to keep up, and this was one of the first vehicles designed in the post-socialist era, or the post-centrist era, because the Austrian government before 1935 was actually ruled by a conglomeration of different parties, you know, but eventually the nationalists or the right-wingers took over. This vehicle's main armament was two 7.92 millimeter Steyr machine guns. Um, Austria had produced copies of the Hungarian Steyr light machine gun. This vehicle had an armor thickness of 4 to 7 millimeters and its speed was 27 kilometers per hour or 46 miles per hour and it had a crew of 3 or 4. And these, ve these vehicles were pretty rare but the Austrians did build a small number of these ADK, uh, these ADKZ Baby Scout um, Scout armored cars. 
which brings us to the next vehicle and probably one of my favorite Austrian vehicles of the pre-World War II era and that is the Steyr ADGZ M35 Midler Panzer Wagon and this was a heavy armored car or heavy infantry support armored car from 1934-1935. Now this um, Brad Panzer's main armament was two 20 millimeter KWK 35 L45 auto cannons or basically two 20 millimeter auto cannons. Its armor thickness was 11 millimeters. Its speed was 70 kilometers per hour or 43.6 miles per hour and it had a crew of six. Now many of you may remember this vehicle during the invasion of Poland. This vehicle was actually seen during the invasion of the Zang in northern Poland on the Polish-German border. Um, and these vehicles were pretty popular with the Austrian army before World War II, but they were also used by the German army. In 1938, Germany eventually annexed Austria and then later on Czechoslovakia. And when the Germans annexed Austria, the Austrian army merged with the German army as Austria became part of Germany and the Greater German Reich, as it was called. And these vehicles served in the Wehrmacht from 1939 until the end of World War II, as some of these vehicles were actually seen during the street fighting in Berlin. There are at least two of these armored cars were still in service during the Battle of Berlin. But this wasn't the only vehicle designed by the, the Austrians. Uh, this wasn't the only heavy infantry support armored car designed by the Austrians in the 1930s. The next vehicle was actually a prototype and this was known as the ADKZ Prototype 1 from 1935. And this was a medium sized infantry support armored car or a prototype medium armored car, infantry support armored car from 1935. And it too was armed with the same model of 20 millimeter um, auto cannons, two 20 millimeter auto cannons. Its armor thickness was only eight to 14 millimeters and it had a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. And this was a prototype vehicle. Only one of these vehicles was ever produced and it was actually seen during the Austrian parade in that year of 1935. The Austrians designed a second version known as the ADKZ Prototype 2, which also came out in the same year 1935. It was also armed with two 20 millimeter auto cannons of its main armament. Its armor thickness was also 8 to 14 millimeters and its speed was 46.6 miles per hour, so slightly faster than the original ADKZ Prototype 1. And only one of these vehicles was also produced and it was used kind of as a training vehicle by the Austrian army before Austria was annexed by Germany in 1938. It's unknown what happened to this vehicle after 1938, but I assume that it was probably either scrapped, kept in storage, or it could have been used as a policing vehicle by the German army. Earlier in 1933, the Austrians had also designed the predecessor to the ADGZ, and that was the ADGC from 1933, and that was the first um, prototype heavy infantry support vehicle from 1933. Its main armament was either one 7.92 millimeter machine gun or one 20 millimeter auto cannon. Its armor thickness was between 8 and 14 millimeters and it had a speed of 40 miles per hour as estimate. Now not much is known about this vehicle. Only one photograph survives of this original ADGZ prototype from 1933, but I assume that this vehicle was probably scrapped. It does not appear in the Austrian military catalog post-1935. And that brings us to another of my favorite Austrian vehicles of the pre-World War II era, and that is the Sauer RR7, also known in German as the SDKFZ 254. And this was a Austrian wheeled cum armored car, or infantry support wheeled cum armored car from 1936. Its main armament was only one 7.92 millimeter machine gun. Its armor thickness was between 6 and 15 millimeters, and it had a speed of between 18.6 to 37.2 miles per hour, depending whether it was using wheels or its wheeled cum track system. Um, this vehicle was also used by the German army 
during the Second World War as a cheap uh, infantry support vehicle for the Wehrmacht during the invasion of Poland and later on during the invasions of Denmark, um, Belgium, and later the Battle of France itself. These vehicles were also spotted or were also captured by American and British forces during the battles of France in 1944 or Operation Overlord. And they were also captured during the Battle of, the battle of Belgium or the Liberation. These were also captured during the Liberation of Belgium in 1944. And they were some of the, you know, stranger yet more interesting um, infantry vehicles of the Austrian army. And one could say this is one of Austria's first attempts at designing a tank-like vehicle. Next vehicle on the list is one of my favorite, if not the only Austrian tank it designed by the Austrians or the closest thing that the Austrians designed to a tank. And that is the ADMK Mulas from 1935. The Mulas was a wheel come track tank it or machine gun tank it from 1935. Its main armament was one 7.92 millimeter Swarlos machine gun and it had a armor thickness of none. This vehicle had no armor at all which makes it one of the strangest vehicles on this list. Now this vehicle is listed as a tank it but to be considered a tank it, it would have to be completely armored and this vehicle is unarmored. This vehicle did have two slabs or two um, slabs of metal that you could roll up to the sides, but it wasn't high enough to protect your head or your chest area. So this vehicle is pretty strange, but I like this vehicle for some reason. I think I just like awkward vehicles like this, you know, awkward vehicles like this that have no armor. This vehicle was used by the Austrian army. It was mostly used as a vehicle for the Austrian army in the years before World War II. It was probably used as the training vehicle by the Germans too, once Germany annexed Austria and Austria became part of the Greater Third Reich. Which brings us to the last armored fighting vehicle, and I say armored lightly, last armored fighting vehicle on the list, and that is the ADMK Mulas Model 1938. Now in 1938, the Austrians designed a partially armored version of the Mulas known as the M38. And the M38 was also armed with a Swallows machine gun. Its armor was pretty light, you know, its armor thickness was probably no more than four to five millimeters. Uh, the armor did not cover the entire vehicle. Your head and body and upper body would still be exposed to small arms fire. And it had a speed of 10 miles per hour or 10 to 27 miles per hour, depending on whether you are using the wheels or the tracks on these vehicles. And these vehicles, both the ADMK uh, M35 and the M38 could just be considered armored cars more than likely. You know, although they are considered um, wheel track um, tankets, they are more like wheel track tankets slash armored cars more than anything. And they were largely used as training vehicles uh, by the Austrian army. And these were the closest things that the Austrians designed to tanks before World War II. Now the Austrians actually did purchase tanks from other countries, mostly Italy. Um, the Austrians did purchase Italian L333, L335, and L338 tankets from the Italian army. And those pretty much became the standard tanks in the Austrian army before World War II. And even during World War II, you know, the Germans did, the Austrians did receive German tanks when Germany annexed Austria and Austria became part of the Greater German Reich. But in terms of, uh, of tanks that the Austrians had before World War II, the most, the, the only tank they really truly had was the Italian L33 through L38 series of tankets. And that's basically it for the armored fighting vehicles designed by Austria before World War II. If I had to pick two of these vehicles to like, I like the ADMK Mulas from 1935, and I already stated my favorite of these armored cars was the Steyr ADGZ M35 Mittler Panzer Wagon, which is my favorite Austrian vehicle that was actually used in combat in World War II. So what are your favorite vehicles from this list? What do you think of these vehicles as a whole? What do you think as a whole of Austria in the years before World War II? Put your opinions in the comment section below, and until next time, this was Shaman Time, signing off.